good to be sitting before you. If you have your Bibles, go to Genesis 37. We'll try to make this quick because y'all got the y'all y'all got way too used to getting out early. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Genesis 37. Now let me give you some context to where we are. We're going to ver- we'll be we're going to start reading at verse 23. But let me give you some context first because I'm a context guy. We are in the story of Joseph. And Joseph was a son of Jacob aka Israel. And he was the favorite son. This is crucial. He was the favorite son. Now, he would have visions and dreams, and each of his, and he had two main visions and dreams, and both visions involved his family bowing to him. The first vision, the brothers were like, I don't know who you think you is. I I don't, I don't, I ain't bowing to you. The second one, his dad was like, Really? I'm going to bow. Everybody just, everybody just going to bow to you. And it stirred up because of this, the favoritism of the father. Joseph was hated by his brothers. So, so Jacob sent him to the pastures to his brothers, and his brothers saw him. And this is where we start reading. They, no, well, they saw him, and they were like, here he come. If you read it in the Bible, I'm literally giving you like the hood, the international hood version. Here he come. Okay. You know, I'm tired of him, all his dreams and all his interpretations and everything, all this stuff. And how they, you know, he, I'm about, I ain't bowing to you. I don't know who you are. I, I, I don't know who this is. I can't, if I had my head set, I'd be, I would clap it, but you know, I can't. Uh, I, I don't know who, I don't know who he think he is, but not on my watch. Let's kill him. And his brother was like, we're going to jump two verses ahead. Verse 21. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from them. He said, let's not take his life. Reuben also said to them, don't shed blood. Throw him into this pit in the wilderness. But don't lay a hand on him, intending to rescue him from them and return him to his father. When Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped off Joseph's robe, the robe of many colors. That was the gift, the robe of many colors that he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty without water. They sat down to eat a meal, and when they looked up, there was a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were carrying aromatic gum, balsam, and resin going down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what do we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come on, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When the Midianite traders passed by his brothers, pulled Joseph, when the Midianite traders passed by his brothers, pulled Joseph out of the pit and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took Joseph to Egypt. So, the title of, of, of our message, of our time together is today is, I thank God for the pit. I thank God for the pit. Cass, that is a jacked up title. That is messed up. I thank God for the pit. We have moments in life where things happen so fast, it makes your head spin, and you find yourself in a difficult position. You find yourself in a place where you have been stripped of your identity, stripped of what what you feel made you you, of your status, and you're living in a pit. I... Even though the pit is is passing in the story, the pit is significant. Because the pit serves as a place of transition. The pit was necessary. Let's go back to the beginning of how how do we start 2020 before before Mother Rona started traveling and doing her world tour. Suffering is necessary for your advancement. I'm going to say it again. Suffering is necessary for your advancement. For the sufferings of this present time, 
shall not be compared to the glory of God that will be revealed in who? In us. So, Joseph was having visions of his future. Because we know how the story ends, that his brothers begin, ha, end up having to what? Bow to him. But God had to put him in a pit situation. Because the state that he was in at that moment, even though he was just young and he was, you know, he do what young people do, be a little prideful, it's okay. But, but it, he had to be put in a situation that will transition him to where God wanted him to be. But we have our pit moments. We call them valley seasons. But the valley is just a pit between two mountains. That we live in a valley season. And we, and we, and we don't, we got, God, why am I down here? God, why am I stuck down here? I, Joseph was probably like, okay, God, you said that I'm going to be a ruler. That I'm going to be a king. Why am I in this dug out well? Why am I in this pit? Why am I here? Am I going to get out? The Lord revealed something to me. I'm going to share this with you. And I hope you catch it. For many of us in here, we have the pit brought us to this building. The pit brought us to 706 West Willie Street. Or the pit might have brought you to 117 East Main Street, Suite 110E. It could have brought you to 1306 Collins Road. It could have brought you to, to the Ohio Glass Museum, a season in time, to, to the Eastgate Event Center. The pit brought you here because this is a place of transition for you. It's a beautiful thing when, when I tell people, come here because you might not be have to, you might not stay a few years, you might be here just a season. But this place was necessary for you to get to your next level. Even in this season that I'm in right now, that it was necessary for me to get to where God needed me to be because I couldn't be perpetrating a lie anymore. I couldn't allow, I couldn't allow trauma and pain and anxiety and fear to run my life anymore. So he said, let me take off your title, pastor. Let me take off your reputation for a moment. Let me make you almost lose your marriage. Let you almost lose your mind and put you into a pit so I can take you to where you need to go. The battle that we have, Pastor Church, is that we don't we leave people in the pit to die. We leave people in the pit season to die. Oh, what are they saying? I've been praying for Carl Lentz in the midst of all this. Because I've been praying for him because I need somebody to snatch him out of that pit. There are pastors in this city. Who need to be snatched up out the pit. I don't know what's on the other side of the pit. I have no idea what has happened. I, all I, if, if, I don't know once I climbed this rope. Joseph didn't know that he was going to be sold into slavery in Egypt. But, he, but that sale propelled him to be who God needed him to be. Not just for himself but for his family. To fulfill what God needed to be fulfilled in that moment. The pit was a place of preparation. Because this is not the, next, the last time he ends up in a hole. Because the Potiphar's wife story, I looked at this from a literary standpoint. That the ripping of the coat of colors was a foreshadowing to the ripping of the garment. Because in Potiphar's house, he was the servant of all servants. Meaning he ran, he ran the house. The only person who had more power than him was Potiphar and maybe his wife. And Potiphar's wife was like, ooh, I want to get into them robes. Praise God. Hallelujah. But his integrity... His integrity was like, you my boss's wife, I ain't touching you. So what she did, this is, this is Bible, this is Bible, that she grabbed him. He tried to run, but she grabbed his robe and pulled it off of him and said, see what had happened? Well, he was like, can I get into them garments? I was like, nah, boo. I'm, I'm married. 
Wait, wait. I got, I, I'm married. I'm sorry. And the servants were talking, and she said it, right? The Bible says she, he, she set the robe right next to her and waited for her husband to get home. It was like, he tried to rape me. Got thrown in jail. But in the pit, <laughs> in the pit, he ran into two people. And it was the cup, the Pharaoh's cup bearer and the, and the chief baker. And he, and he could have just sat there in the pit and said, guess what? Well, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in jail. I'm in the pit again. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going gonna, gonna to sit right here. I'm going to sit on my oil. Y'all good? I'm going to be here for a while. You good? Instead, they both have dreams. The interpretation of the cupbearer's dream is, you about to get up out of here in three days. You about to be restored back to your position in three days. And then the baker, he said, yeah, you're going to get up out of here in a body bag, but you're going to get up out of here. And guess what happened? The pharaoh had a celebration. He pulled both of them out and said, cupbearer, your job's restored. Baker, And Joseph told the cupbearer, remember me when you get out. Rem remember this, remember me when you get out. How is the pit a place of preparation? Just because you're in the hole doesn't mean you, you don't need to use what you got. I found it funny. A month in, I get a phone call from one of my friends from college who I ain't talked to in a long time. He called me and said, Cass, what's going on? I said, I'd rather not tell you. He said, okay, I need your help. Somebody's house got demons. Why are you calling me? Because the Holy Spirit told me to call you. I don't know. The Holy Spirit told me to call you. But I need prayer. I need help. Why are you calling me? Because God told me to call you. Why am I saying all this? Why am I saying all this? For many of you, auntie, for 10 years of your life, you were sitting in the pit of despair. And you were wondering, am I still usable? Am I still valuable? Am I still worth what God has given me? Because everything that you had was stripped from you. I know this not just from a prophetic place. You're my aunt. I just, I know your life. But God's telling me to tell you that I didn't put you on the sidelines just to sit there and take up seats. I was honing you for such a time as this. I was honing the oil. I was pressing the oil so that way your ethos, the prophetic ethos of your life, your character will be stronger than it ever was before. That the fire could be stirred up. And, but you just sat, you were able to sit back and be quiet and intercede in the shadows. So that way now God can bring you down to a little old city called Lancaster who needs that fire and that anointing that is in you. The pit brought you here. The rope pulled you out. But God has brought you to your wealthy place. There's a reason. The cupbearer in that moment remembered, said, oh, because the Pharaoh was having some crazy dreams. And, and the cupbearer was like, two years later, I know a guy. I know a guy. He's sitting up in jail. He been in the pit. Kicking it in jail. Stayed faithful. He didn't lose his character. His character was in fact built while he was still in jail. The cupbearer said, I know him. Pull him out. Pulled him out of jail. They made him look all presentable for the Pharaoh because you know you can't just be all get just can't come to the Pharaoh any kind of way. Brought to the Pharaoh. And this is scripture. He said, I had this dream. And he broke the dream down. He said, listen. You will have seven years of prosperity. You will have seven years of famine. While you're in prosperity, take a fifth each year and store it up. And you will have enough to feed not only your people, 
but the world. It's coming from behind me. <laughs> Shout out to our security. <laughs> and because of his preparation, because you know, in the midst of the pit, he was praying. In the midst of the pit, he probably might have, might have pushed some gruel away a couple of times just so that way he can still hear from God. But because he was ready, because he was ready, he was positioned. He became just like Potiphar's house because Potiphar's house was the practice run. Potiphar's house, again, let's look at it from a, from a literary standpoint. Potiphar's house was the practice run for what he did for Egypt. He had a, the only person who was above him was Potiphar in Potiphar's house. And when he was, and when, when he was given his job to the, by the Pharaoh, the only person who was above him was Pharaoh. And he managed it well. He managed it well. And God's word was fulfilled. His brothers, had, his brothers and his daddy had to bow. But the Bible says we know in part, we prophesy in part. The part they didn't catch was that he was, he was bringing them to a place of increase and restoration. He was bringing them to a place of increase and restoration. And they were able to stay there for centuries until somebody done forgot. And then we got the story of Moses and all that. The pit was necessary for that to happen. The cross was necessary for things to happen. If Jesus would have stayed on this earth, the Holy Spirit would not have been able to come. If Jesus would have just died of old age, we would not have been able to have redemption for our sins. The pit, Golgotha, Gethsemane, if it be your will, take this cup from me. God's like, okay, be unto me according to thy word. It's necessary. I'm so happy y'all stayed. Because like me, you're in a season of healing. You're in a season of healing because everything you knew was rocked. And rather than running, because I know y'all wanted to run, you stayed connected with God. Do you understand how much of a seat of honor you sit in this church? We don't just love you because we love you. We love you because we honor you. And it's not for anything that you've given us. It's because of what you carry. People did not value what you carry. People didn't value what you carried. That's why there were several occasions where you were pushed aside. Because either they didn't value it or they were jealous of it. Walk in the fullness of who you are. Walk in the oil of who you are. I'm telling you, walk in the oil, the anointing. There is an anointing on your life. There is a, you, <laughs> there is a beauty to what you have. Don't be afraid of it anymore. Don't run from it. Walk in the fullness of your Holy Spirit. The, the intercessory anointing that is on your life, don't sit on it anymore. We need people, we need midwives to help birth things in the spirit in this season. The thing is shata e kababa she korebe she andara e kerebo shata ya. E bebe she koraba she kerebe she andara ya. God did not call you to birth stillborn babies. God did not call you to birth dead dreams. He's called you to birth things forth. And it's not in the way you think. There's deliverance in your hands. 
Because sometimes the job of a midwife is to snatch people out of the fire and bring them into the presence of God. There's healing in your hands. And people didn't want to support your gift. People didn't, didn't want to back up your gift. Your, 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 your womanity, your, 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 your womanhood, your womanhood stopped people from respecting your gift. You have permission. You have the freedom to move however you need to move. Not just in this building. Anywhere. I break the chains. There's literally been a collar that's been put around Joan that was around your neck with a chain. And the more you try to move forward, it will jerk you back. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. There was a Python spirit that was put on you by the previous by the, by the previous people that you were around. I snatch it off, I cut it off at the head in the name of Jesus. That you will walk in the freedom, walk in the authority that you have been called to walk in, prophetess. You've been called to walk in that authority. You've been called to walk in, into, into an intercessory authority. You don't have to be in the battle. You just sit in, you just get to sit in the sit in the command center and pray, and stuff happens on the field. My God, we break the, I break the chains off of you. I break the restraints off of you in the name of Jesus. Quit stifling yourself. You're not an uncontrollable fire. You're not chaos. You might think you're chaos, but you're a reorient, you're a reorientation. You want to be you, your orientation to the heart of the Father. But all your life, you've been told you've been chaos, you've been disorder, that you just destroy things. But if people just actually listen to what you have to say. And there's, there's that watchman. You have the intercessor and the watchman. There's a watch that, that was stifled. You're the one who goes, hey, something's coming. Something's, I'm warning you. Something's coming. Something's coming. And people go, that's oh, yes, Norm, whatever. He crazy. I affirm the gift that God has put into your life. I affirm the call. I reach to your childhood in the name of Jesus and I snatch every negative word that's been spoken over your life and I affirm everything that you are. I affirm everything that God has called for you to be and in these, in your latter days because you got another 20 some years left in, the, in your latter days it will be the best days of your life because you finally get to walk in the freedom that God has called for you to have. In the book of Isaiah, it says, go set a watchman on the wall. You've been watching. You've been watching. You're going to see a shift in your prayer life. You're going to see a shift in the way that you preach. When that jail opens back up for visitors, they ain't going to know what hit them because God's going to be like, God's going to show you things about the men that you're ministering to that you did not see before. Because you're going back in there. And you're going down to Nelsonville. And you're about to be able to love on these men and, and, and be the father that they needed. And you shall see a shifting of the hearts of your, of your legacy. My God. You will see a shifting of the hearts of your legacy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm praying for, I'm praying for your boys. You'll see a shifting of the heart of your legacy. Your legacy is your children and your grandchildren. And a generation that shall come thereafter. That it might not be your children, but your grandchildren about to wreck shop for the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for the pit. I thank God for the pit. 
if gets I hear God saying I'm I'm re the work he told me he's he's resetting things that as they were when we started in 2017 but it's going to be different the people who have been here for a while, y'all remember how it was? We didn't know how church was going to begin or end. We didn't know who was going to walk in the door. People were literally walking in, get, seeking deliverance. Demons were trying to rise up in the middle of the service, and the Holy Spirit would take care of that real quick. We, were, we barely had to move a muscle. We're getting back to that place because God had to get me back to that place. That, you know, God had to deal with us in this season so that way he could heal us. I thank God for the pit. I thank God for the pit. James, you need to climb the rope. God has sent you a rope. Climb it. Climb it. Climb it hard. Use arms and legs. Climb it. It's not going to be to your slavery. It's going to be to your freedom. climate. God, I thank you. Ooh, my God. God, I thank you for the pit. I thank you because if it wasn't for the pit, we couldn't move forward. I come against every you spirit of torment I command you to leave this room leave the inhabitants of this room leave anyone who is watching this feed right now in the name of Jesus and I release the peace of God over every single mind over every single heart in I speak peace. I speak the shalom of God in this place in the name of Jesus. I speak it now in the name of Esha. I speak it now in the name of Jesus. I cast you out fear. I cast you out doubt. I cast you out unbelief. Esha. I snatch you out in the name of Jesus. And I release the peace of God in this place. The faith that you have given us. Unshakable faith. Every word that you have spoken over this ministry shall come to pass. In Jesus' name, I speak over this building right now, and it shall be ours in the name of Jesus. I speak to this neighborhood right now because you have given us victory over it in the name of Jesus. You set us here, God. You set us here in 2017 when I turned around and looked at this building and said, I wonder who's in there. I thank you for the pit. I thank you for the shift. I thank you for transition. I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance. I speak deliverance in this room right now in Jesus' name. You spirit of rage and anger, I snatch you out of this room right now in the name of Jesus. And I replace you with joy right now. Every vestige of you, I snatch you out in the name of Jesus. The spirit of addiction that tries to linger in this building I snatch you out right now in the name of Jesus and I bring forth an atmosphere of healing because you told me that this house shall be a house of prayer that it shall be a tabernacle God makes this place your tabernacle in ways that we've not seen before Lord God miracle signs and wonders be the norm across this across this property when people walk on this side of the street that the cancer be heal oh god that the illnesses be broken that the yokes be destroyed in the name of jesus i speak to our churches in india right now and lord god i speak growth and expansion lord. growth and expansion lord god i speak to our to our pastor there pastor ip and i speak growth and influence in the name of jesus i hear the lord saying i'm sending 
sending you 10 overseers to help you carry the load because things are about to explode, Lord God. Lord God, even for this building, Lord God, as coronavirus ends, Lord God, as coronavirus is seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, let people run to the well for their healing. Let people run to the well for their deliverance that you have given us. You have given us the tools. You've given us the keys to restore a city. You've given us the, te- the keys to restore a region. You've given us the keys to restore a county. You've given us the keys, God. Now, God, open the floodgates. The impurities are gone. The skeletons are out of the closet. God, open us up so you may be glorified by us, God. Woo! Open us up, God, so that you may be glorified by us. What was stifled in the spirit from us having to bounce around from building to building, from place to place. God, open up the, break the seal in the name of Jesus. Break the seal in the name of, break the seal in the name of Jesus. Well, God, make it so that we walk so freely that people don't know what church y'all go to. Just follow me and I'll take you that the spirit of God flows from us uh, as we walk out of this door Lord God, as I'm walking downtown Lord God let the spirit begin to flow as long as I'm walking in my house in my neighborhood let the spirit flow wherever we go God the oil that is in this room let it flow from, from every single place let us leave a trail of your glory of your presence in ways that we have never seen before God because you brought us out of the pit and put us into a place of promise So, God, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise because you have been faithful to your word. In Jesus' name. And they all said amen. Now, can we seal it with a praise? Come on. Seal it with a praise. Like you lost your mind. We ain't got no neighbors no more. There's no one above us. There's no one beside us. Let's give God the praise. There's been a praise inside of us that has been pent up for the past three years. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. Because you brought us out of the pit. You snatched us out of the pit. And brought us to purpose. Hey, my God. And you brought us to purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.